Hi, this is Brother Richard. This is Brother Richard. And today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. And this will be part 280. <clears throat> the title of our lesson today is The Ages End Part 2. We're talking about events that are taking place that will result <clears throat> in the move of the Lord in three major areas. The gathering, the rapture, and the second coming. Scripture teaches <clears throat> the churches of the book of Revelation are not church communities of the past, but church communities that will exist in the future. <clears throat> the church communities are the result of the gathering of the Lord <clears throat> at His current coming. Turn to Revelation, the first chapter, verse 1. We're going to show, contrary to what most people believe, that there is nothing in the book of Revelation that is not future. There are references <clears throat> to things of the past on earth, but not the things of the book of Revelation, which is called a book of prophecy. <clears throat> the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So the book of Revelation is a revealing of things which must shortly come to pass. It is not a book of history. It is a book of prophecy. Drop down to verse 10. Same chapter. <clears throat> I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. I'm going to read that from the Greek interlinear, which is a word-for-word -word translation. I came to be in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. So John is speaking about a transition that he experienced which took him out of the present world into a future situation, a future stage, which is called the Lord's Day. Now when you read the prophecies <coughs> of the Old Testament, <coughs> you read about an area, an, a, um, a time period called the day of the Lord, in which all things will come to a culmination. What John is referring to here is that the Lord takes him out of the time flow of the present into the future, into the era that is called in prophecy the day of the Lord, in which events that will culminate <clears throat> the end of the age are going to take place. Okay, well, your studies have shown us that this, the whole, the whole kit and caboodle, everything, God's master plan is to bring more sons into the picture, into his kingdom. Yes. Okay, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show his servants. Mm-hmm things which must shortly come to pass, he sent and signified it by his angel. Mm -hmm. Well, we see that the servants are being spoke of, we're not, we don't hear the sons being spoke of, we know it's a book of prophecy, so is it eventually going to come around, or how about you explain that to us instead of me? Well, a servant is a son. Jesus is called the servant <clears throat> in Isaiah. It says, Behold my servant, in whom I am well pleased. Okay. We're sons, but we're servants. 
uh, that's that a job. A position is uh, that of a son, intimately connected with the father. We're still servants. <clears throat> In this respect, we want to establish the fact that John is taken out of his time domain into the future. And then he's taken out of the future into eternity. So there's two transitions. <clears throat> he's taken out of time into the future. <clears throat> in verse 10, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. <clears throat> and saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, what thou sees, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto Smyrna, unto Pergamos, unto Thyatira, unto Sardis, unto Philadelphia, unto Laodicea. Now, what's being said here is John is taken into the future. We have to establish that in our minds. Otherwise, you're going to see this from a human perspective. John is in the future. The Lord is telling him, you're going to see certain things. Write them in a book and send them to the churches in this time, not in your time. <clears throat> That's the key to the whole situation. The churches that he's mentioning are churches that are going to be revived at the time of the day of the Lord. Having said that, John is then taken from the future into eternity. Revelation, the fourth chapter. Verse 1. <clears throat> After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet, talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. So, we have to look at the book of Revelation from this perspective. <clears throat> He's seeing things that are to take place. This is repeated several times. And after that, he's taken out of time totally into eternity where he sees things out of the time frame. <clears throat> Having said that, let's go on. Scripture teaches, John sent the book to the churches of the day of the Lord with a warning not to bring the judgments of the day of the Lord upon themselves. Revelation 22 verses 18 to 19. Well, what do you mean upon themselves? Upon the people of the time of the future. He was instructed to send the book to seven churches. Not the seven churches that were in John's time, but the seven churches that would be existent on the day of the Lord, at the time of the period of the Lord's return, and the time of the judgments of the Lord. The book of Revelation is a book of prophecy. Now, Revelation 22... <clears throat> We want to start with verse 8. <clears throat> and I, John, saw these things and heard them. When I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. So John has finished the book. He is so totally um, 
at awe about the individual that has shown him these things, he falls down to worship him. John's task is completed. Now, he sends the book to the churches of the time of the future. Verses 18 to 19. <clears throat> For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. What book? What could he just read? Wrote. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. This is a statement that could not happen any time before the day of the Lord. Why? Because the torment, plagues that are written in the book will not fall until the time of the day of the Lord. If you take the book of Revelation and you totally distorted it, as the scripture warns against, at this time or any time in the past, you would not suffer any of these plagues because the plagues haven't been fallen yet. You all have to be living in the time in which the judgments are going to fall to experience that judgment. When do you mark the beginning of the day of the Lord and when do you mark the end? <coughs> the rapture. The rapture is the beginning. Yes. And the end is when? Second coming. So it's not the beginning isn't the book of uh, the beginning of sorrows? Well, the rapture is the conclusion of the preparation that started at the beginning of sorrows. It's the second move of God. First move is the judgment, okay. leading to the establishment of the communities. Okay. Second move is the rapture, which takes the church out of the communities into eternity. What this is saying is that this book is delivered to those churches, Revelation. What you're looking here at these churches in Revelation are the churches of the future. They're not the churches of 2,000 years ago. The understanding that we have, which cannot be disputed, I'm going to read it again. For I testify unto every man, verse 18, that hear the words of the prophecy of this book. The book has been distributed to the seven churches. They have the book they're being admonished not to deviate from the words of the book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Who distributes the plagues? The sons of God. Exactly. Prototokos. Well, the Prototokos are still on earth. So therefore, if any man does this today, he's not going to experience the plagues that are written in the book. Because it has to be distributed by the prototokos. And the prototokos haven't been glorified yet. So this is the future. This is not the present. Let me ask a question then. Yeah. Since today we have false teachers in the churches, those who make up things and haven't got a clue what they're talking about, I could go on by <coughs> one. And these plagues are not yet ready because the protocols are not glorified should we understand that the pastors and the evangelists won't get it as bad as they would if they did it in this time sure but this it, but it says that they're going to get their portion with the hypocrites at the time that he comes not before okay everything in god's schedule this is for people who hear this book at the time of the day of the Lord and the events that are going to take place at that point. Yes. I'm thinking what he's talking about right now is that the, the gathering hasn't been included in what we're talking about right here, right now. The judgment that he's talking about is going to happen at the, at the gathering, yes? No, after after the gathering. It's the gathering that enables the prototokos teachers 
to gain their position. They gain their position preparing the churches for the rapture. The rapture takes place. Tribulation period takes place. Then the judgments fall. So you're looking at a series of progressive events dealing with this time period. No, just one second. Are you saying that Jeremiah 23, 1 to 2, does not happen at the same time as Jeremiah 25, 30 to 31? That happens at the same time. That's the beginning of Sodom. Right. So why are you talking about the end of the rapture? The end of the rapture is the second phase. The Lord moves in three phases. Okay. The first phase is the judgment. The second phase after the judgments, after he comes for the the judgment and the gathering are on one phase. The Lord starts and he finishes it. He finishes it at the gathering. That's done. We're entering into the second phase, which is the preparation of the churches for the rapture and the tribulation period. The Lord will move at that point for the rapture. Descends from heaven with a shout, right. takes the churches out, that ends that phase. I'm asking, when mm -hmm. do the pastors of the fake churches, today's church, mm -hmm. get what they're going to get? At the second coming. <clears throat> the pastors of the churches that exist now, today, right now, get theirs at the beginning of sorrow. That's what I'm talking about, okay. But the, I'm talking about the individuals here. In that time, okay, I understand. We, we're talking about the future, the, not the, what's already gone. The gathering is finished. We want to proceed into the next phase. Right. Go ahead. But the point I'm, I'm, I'm trying to establish is the phase that you're talking about, the Demic Man no longer exists in exactly. terms of dominion. Exactly. There is no church at that point. There is no fake church where the no, pastor's going to no, get anything. No, 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 no. There is a... Well, you can't say that either. There's a church because most of them get left behind. They don't make the rapture. They're going to go through the hell of the tribulation period. They're going to experience all the stuff that they pour it worse than the, than the beginning of sorrows and, and the gathering. Mm. But because, do you call that the true church? Yes. Okay. Yes. But still the church. What? Uh, do you have a comment? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I know it's difficult, but we're trying to divide these into three separate okay. areas. The first one, dealing with the gathering, <laughs> that's done. We're doing what we're doing now is the establishment of the communities, which is done by the Lord, and the things that fall out as a result of that. The churches are the communities <coughs> that will exist in the period of the day of the Lord after the beginning of sorrows. Is the implication that many of them will fail? Most of them. Most of them will fail. Most of them will. Which we're going to go into now. Okay. <clears throat> Scripture teaches the church communities of the era of the day of the Lord will not center around the office of a pastor but will be under the authority of the faithful and wise servants who have been elevated to the stature of rulers over the Lord's possessions. Matthew 24, verse 45 to 47. We're talking about the authority over these churches. It's not going to be under a pastor. Matthew 24, verse 45 to 47. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. This is the individual 
that is going to be the head of the churches of the book of Revelation. Now the scripture says, he'll make him ruler over all his goods. What kind of rulership is he talking about? Revelation 1, verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand. The seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. The seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. So the church of this time is not going to be under the authority of a pastor. It's going to be under the authority of an angel which is not a celestial angel, but it's a saint raised to the position of a heavenly being who is given authority to direct the church on earth. Now we find something interesting. Scripture teaches the book that John was told to write. You read it again. <clears throat> the Lord tells him, <clears throat> in verse 11, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, what thou seest write in a book. And send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. John does that in Revelation 22 with a warning. I'm sending you this book. You take this book and you speak only those things that are written in this book. If you deviate, you're going to come under a judgment. If you leave something out... You're going to be taken out of the book of life and sent into the torment regions. So all future. He assigns <clears throat> the angels over each one of these church communities. The book is sent to the churches. The letter that you're getting ready to read is sent to the angel. Why is that? Because the letter does not, it's not read until just before the rapture takes place. The, the, the letter is an evaluation of that angel's church. Oh, not the angel. Not the angel. Because by that time he's already elevated. Oh, yeah, sure. No, it's not an evaluation of the angel, it's an evaluation of the church community. Hmm what it needs to do to make the rapture. But surely the angel elevated, we know it's not his evaluation, having seen the poor performance of his church, will feel as if he's failed in some way. No, he won't. Hmm. He'll know why. Hmm. It won't be on his part, it'll be on the part of the people on, on the earth. Yeah. And in no way does the Lord, even in, in the slightest, cast dispersion on the angel. Perhaps he feels he hasn't castigated them sufficiently. No, he understands what it is because mm. the Lord points it out. It's dealing with the lack on the part of the people of the church community themselves. They're allowing things to come in. I'll give you a case in point. We're going to take a look here. We said the letter is an evaluation, which takes place shortly before the rapture. Revelation, the second chapter, verse 1. Unto the angel 
of the church at Ephesus, write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. So he's talking here about him being the author. Verse 2, I know thy works and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored, and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. It's an indictment on the church community. Mm -hmm. The fault lies not with the angel, it lies with the people who made a sovereign decision to leave their first love. In other words, the relationship they once had, the closeness in which everything they did was because of love of Him that's fallen. Now they're doing it basically out of habit and out of um, a, a basic comprehension that it's the right thing to do. Not because they're zealous of pleasing him. Yes. So Mr. Jones. Yes. That's an influence. Sure it is. So these people have been through a trial already to give them establishment of they, they have maturity to them, and yet we see that they, they're screwing it up. Yes. Yes, that's what they've been accused of. Why? Because remember we said this is just before the rapture. The Lord allows the influences to come into the communities to test the people. Okay. That just amazes me, but okay, you would think all that had business would be taken care of, but no, there's a refinement. There's always more. Would you um, say that this is more the apostle, prophet, elder leaders, or the elder congregation who is allowing this lackadaisical attitude to come into it? Sure. Which? The leaders. The leaders, yeah. The leaders. So is it almost then the congregation follows the leaders. The leaders yes. are being like the school, then therefore they will be. But the idea is this, is there's a prototokist communities. You can get away with that with the ordinary human sure. uh, setup of today. But the uh, the individual each individual knows better. So if it was a non prototokist church, I'm understanding you to mean the Lord would let it slide. Wouldn't let it slide, but um, <clears throat> basically what he's done here is to make arrangements in which what's happened in the past <clears throat> should not happen in the future. Churches fall, why? Because of the frailness of the human leadership. Right. Because of the individuals yielding to the Luciferian influence. The church here now has been taken out of that it's under the influence of tried and tested, immovable, implacable leaders who aren't human anymore, but have a connection to others who have been tried and tested and should know better. And a leadership and a, and a constituency of people that should know better. The Lord expects more from them than he would from the churches of today. Yes. Did you just say that they were immortal? The leaders are immortal, yeah. Okay. The angels. But so is the people of the saints are the, are the ones that we're talking about right now. Yes. They, they get called to the gathering? They made the gathering, yes. Okay, so that's interesting. Were they only believers or were they apostles? No, they're disciples. Disciples, that's right. You, you can't make the gathering unless you are. They... That was the test. They made the gathering because they endured all the stuff that it took to get them to the gathering. They're in the communities now. They're being taught, being prepared. This is near the end of this time. And near the end of any time the Lord puts the, 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 the individual to the test to see if they're going to remain faithful. So he allows all these influences to come in. 
So I'm thinking about, you know, we're not glorified yet. Mm -hmm. Will we know who's going to make it and who's not going to make it? In our when, when, when you get to be in junk status, yeah, sure you will. After our glorification. You're not glorifying yeah. until the rapture, but when you make angelic status over the churches, you will know. You'll be able to look in, down to, into the slightest individual and be able to see because you're a custodian over the book of Revelation. Okay. You can know whose name is written in the book of life. You'll know. You'll know exactly what's going to be happening at the time of the letters that are illustrated. It's done not for the angel, it's done for the community on the earth. I realize that, but the thing is, is the angel is given a status of high exaltation, and he's not yet glorified. And it's just amazing how much responsibility is upon his shoulders, and they still screw it up. You know? Well, the only difference between where he is now in glorification is that where he is now, he has access to the whole creation. Mm. Glorification puts him outside the creation okay. into the Creator. That's so it's not going to be an error on his fault. He's going to give. He's going to give the whole counsel of God. Sure. Yeah. Sure. He's beyond uh, 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 falling at this point. <laughs> right. Okay. That's I imagine he's going to say, "Don't make me come down then." <laughs> yeah. So the people, the people, the saints. What percentage of them make the rapture, and what percentage don't? Uh, and the ones that make the rapture, that um, basically. Or just a small percentage. Okay, but most of them Fraction don't make the rapture. Most of, most of, it's only two churches that even have com gotcha. commendations okay. here. But you're going to have people within the communities right. that make, make the rapture. Exactly. But okay. the church as a whole ain't going to make it. Right. And everybody knew this. Be well, everybody that was in the know knew this before. That's why they're being prepared for the tribulation period. So for the people of the saints to get into the gathering... Who understood now that their disciples are not believers? What did they have to do to meet that bar, that level? Commitment. Purely commitment. Yeah. Performance of any ministrations. Commitment. Okay. Jesus said, "You mean my my disciple? You can't love mother, father, son more than me." Right. Okay. First love. Okay. Okay. Yes. We're not yet glorified, <coughs> but we are immortal. Sure. Yeah. But let's go on. So you get this letter. It's evaluation of the community. Notice what it goes on to say. He points out each church's flaw. The church here at Ephesus, they left their first love. Now notice what it says in verse 5, chapter 2. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. What does that mean? That means they'll cease from being a church. They're going to be scattered. Mm -hmm. Now, do they, the, the, the people on, on, the, on the earth at the time, in the church, do they fully understand the significance of remove thy candlestick? Sure. To no longer be a church. Sure. Are they scattered? If, if should that happen? Sure. What will happen is when the rapture takes place, those Sapphirians will have access to all the church communities. This is going go in there and wipe everything out. Immediately, the the Holy uh, Spirit leaves them. Okay. Okay. Interesting. The the um, the restrainer is, leaves. Right. The power leaves, and it's uh, vulnerable to. Uh, the Luciferians and the, all the evil sweeps over the earth like a tidal wave. Do you believe that those who fail to make the rapture grasp what you've just said? That in the failing to make the rapture, they are now, uh, as I say, vulnerable to Luciferian influence? It's going to be explained to them, sure. Mm. They will know. But Luciferian influence, you can't under, underrate it, underestimate it. They'll rationalize. They will rationalize. When you look at what's being said to each church, he's putting his finger right on the crux, crux, of, the, crux of the problem and telling them what needs to be done to correct it. But for the most part, it's going to be not 
heated. Mm. And that church is going to go into tribulation periods. And should we understand that it's not heated? It's not heated because they've already fallen into a pseudo reality. Yeah. Oh. And from which they are unwilling to extricate themselves. That's the key, unwilling. Okay. Just like people today are unwilling. You can tell them the truth and they'll look at it and they'll have a rationale because their mind's programmed to yes. look at it from a slanted perspective which they are unwilling to objectively evaluate. The people have the ability to do the right thing if they so will it today. Mm -hmm. But they are unwilling to do the right thing. So the enemy takes advantage of that. And uh, the end, of course, doesn't end well. Let's go on. <clears throat> Scripture teaches the promises in the letters to the angels are for them to instruct the churches of the rewards that await them uh, the overcoming saint. In other words, the promises in the letters are for the angels to remind the churches if you continue to do this, this is what's waiting for you. If you continue to go the way you're going, you're going to forfeit this. Case in point, Revelation 3rd chapter verse 11. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. This is the older group. You're being warned, hey, you have it. Hold on to it. If you don't, somebody else is going to take what God had for you. And we know the older group is basically identified as sitting on thrones wearing crowns. And drop down to verse 12. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, the name of the city of my God, which is in New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. This is for the priests that are in the communities. So everybody is reminded of his calling, his position, what's waiting for him. The rapture is imminent. Hold on. The reason they're doing this is because the Luciferian influence is getting greater and greater and greater. People are falling left and right under the influence, just like they're doing now. doesn't change. Only the one who remains steadfast to the end, just like the, 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 the five fo foolish virgins, the five wise virgins, they're together until the end and the separation takes place. <clears throat> and so we see the angels have an important place in this to <clears throat> maintain the influence over the community so that they are strengthened, <clears throat> so they still have a connection. Anybody that wants to has a connection. There are others who don't want the connection. Revelation, the third chapter, verse 14. Unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot, I would that thou art cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increase with goods, and have need of nothing, knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. They're so far gone that they don't realize their true spiritual condition, because they have traded God's priority system for the world's priority system. When the angel over the church communicates with the leadership, the apostles, the, the prophet, is this done through 
dreams, visions, and impressions? I believe it's done the same way it was done with John. They're called up to heaven and they're given uh, oh, okay. That's interesting. instruction, and then they go back. Hmm. Spirit takes them. Right. That's what he wants to do through the saint, and if you go back, yes. Alright, let's see if I can get this out. So, Mr. Jones, um, when the gathering is called, there are going to be teachers and there's going to be students. Mm -hmm. Are every one of those teachers that are called, are they more than likely going to make the rapture, or they're guaranteed to make the rapture? Well, there's no guarantee. You're called in the immediate, initially at the beginning of sorrows. You're going to split the two groups. One's going to be faithful, the other's not going to be faithful at the end of the gathering. So, we're not even talking about the people of the saints right now. We're talking about the, 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 oh. the angels. Yeah, the potential angels. But you're going back into the beginning of sorrows. The beginning of sorrows is the test for the teacher that will become the angel. At the gathering, the test is over. He gets his reward, his inheritance, his higher status. Okay, but you're saying even at that level, you're not guaranteed the rapture. I said you're not guaranteed the rapture at the calling, at the beginning of sorrows. Okay. Right. When you get to stand before the Lord, you've made it. You're going to get your reward. Your status is sealed. All you're going to have to wait for now is the glorification. He said, I'm going to give you rulership over all my goods. So that's telling you, you got his whole trust and everything. You've, 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 you've overcome <clears throat> the ones at that point are going to be the elders that you are teaching that constitute the churches of the book of Revelation. There are going to be some priests there also, priests and elders, that you're going to be teaching. But for the most part, their test comes at the end of the book of Revelation where the influences are allowed to flow free in the communities and each one is going to be responsible to remain faithful or to yield to that particular influence. Can I have you clarify briefly for me the sea of glass? Revelation 15. 15, uh -huh, okay. Well, before you go there, mm -hmm. Revelation 4. Verse 6 refers to the sea of glass when it comes to crystal. Is that the same sea of same glass? Same sea of glass. Okay. This one, you don't have anybody there. Right. Revelation 15, you have the people that overcame the mark of the beast. Okay. So I just wanted to clarify what is the sea of glass? That's what it is. That's what it appears to be in John. It's a region before the throne, a glorified region, which is totally uh, sheer. It, it just reflects <clears throat> um, with a, a brilliance of it, it enhances the um, view of the people that are standing on it. Is it an abode? No. It's a condition. No, it's a, um, a place. A location you have before the, the altar. Spot. All right before the altar you have this region where right. people are standing on it called the sea of glass I'm waiting for him to say dimension and then keep this thing, keep this, 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 this. I did say reality yeah, I, I, I thought that yeah. Praise the Lord. so I've understood then that the group come up to the heavens they're in this sea of glass region just because it looks nice no that's where their place is why? why glass? it's not really glass it's light. Okay. But it's giving, John is giving you how it looks to him. Okay. Everything okay. in heaven is light, but light takes on measurements. It takes on structure. Mm. Uh, you have the altar, which is a structure. People are seated or standing before it. There are things on the altar that they are doing as they're instructed to do. You have uh, the elder place where you got thrones. 
All the everything in the heavens is made of light. Okay, I understood that the fire element it is representative of uh, the Father. Yes. It's mingled with the glass. What do we understand from that? Well, it, it basically is talking about there is a uh, interspacing interaction of all these elements, but they're harmonious. Okay. They work in a, such a way that they radiate beauty, glory, and right. splendor. So if you were looking at it, you would, you would say that's life. Yeah, this oh, is an yeah. expression of life. You would say it's, it's life. life. You could see it's light. Yes. You could see the tr true state that it is in. Gotcha. It, it gives you, it gives John <coughs> an impression. It looks like this, John mm -hmm. would say. Mm -hmm. okay. So is that uh, glass region, is it in the, would it be safe to say it's in the plurality region? Yes. It's in the heaven of heavens. Okay. Hmm? Yes. <laughs> so we know that fire is reminiscent of purity. It purifies. Mm. Yes. But if it's already pure, fire is an enhancement, I guess. It glorifies. Hmm. Interesting. Y3H. <coughs> uh, uh, Hebrew says our God is a um, consuming fire. The fire element is what his ministers are composed of. Seraphim. And cherubim. So is there um, some aspect of purification or I don't want to use the word glorification in this uh, Revelation 15 verse 2? Sure. <clears throat> the sea of glass is a, is a state of glorification. It's ma manifesting glory to the people that are on it. Okay. Everybody's going to have a place in heaven. Everything you see in heaven there is a group setting. Yes. When those who come out of great tribulation, they come out as a group before the altar. The people that overcame the mark of the beast go to the sea of glass as a group. Everything becomes connected to some group. The prototokos, it's called the church of the firstborn. It is a group. You're going to be connected to some family. And that family is going to be positioned in some arena of light commensurate with its ability to function. The people on the sea of glass cannot ascend around the throne like the elders. They are in a state in which that's where their place that's is going to be. Yes. Yeah. We know Satan comes dressed as an angel of light. So light is something, a composition of the many different life forms have light but Satan's light has to be an imitation at some level. At Certainly, some level. it's an imitation light. Hmm. Since he's transformed himself, he, he imitates light. Mm -hmm. He can't be light because light is pure, holy, and glorious. Satan's a liar and he's corrupted, so he can't be a cre true creature of light. But he and sure can fool people into thinking that he is. Well, that's exactly my, what I was getting ready to ask. So how, how do you tell the difference? To the Holy Spirit. Only to the Holy Spirit. Uh, the saints are light. Yeah. I was watching Ancient Aliens the other day, and they were talking about all these inscriptions in these, in these rock carvings they're showing a brilliance over the head of these individuals signifying they have a light or a resonance or a, a, a glory, if you will. Yes. And so the representation of, of light, but it's actually a pseudo light? Sure. Or, okay. Sure. Uh, the beings that will walk this earth uh, from the fourth empire are going to be beings of light. But they're falling. The difference will be when the true light comes into the world, it's going to extinguish the false light. Mm. They'll not be able to stand before true light. Amen. 